एंड जय हिंद चिल्ड्रेन आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन टूडेज लाइव क्लास ऑफ केमिस्ट्री चिल्ड्रेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर एसिड बेसिस एंड सॉल्ट एंड इन प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैव एक्सप्लेन द एंसर्स ऑफ बुक एक्सरसाइज ए एंड बी इज इट सो आई होप दैट यू अंडरस्टूड ऑल द एंसर्स ऑफ दो एक्सरसाइजेस नाउ टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एंसर्स ऑफ नेक्स्ट बुक एक्सरसाइज दैट इज एक्सरसाइज सी very short answer questions okay children in this exercise you have to write the answers of the question in one sentence or two sentences okay and the question number 1 is what is an acid base indicator and give an example or little then so here in this question you have to write that the definition of acid base indicator okay so children the substances which can be used to test if a given substance is acidic or basic in nature is known as an acid base indicator and the example is methyl orange got it once again i am going to repeat the substances which can be used to test if a given substance is acidic or basic in nature so such substances are known as an acid base indicator and the example is methyl orange all right children now the question number 2 is name one each of acidic and basic substances so children here you have to write one one substance who are acidic in nature and basic in nature so simply you can write that acidic substance there are many example you can write just any one like lemon okay lemon is an acidic substance because an acid is present in it and the name of the acid is citric acid got it you can write lemon you can write orange okay you can write tamarind you can write grapes apples because in these all substances acid is present so they are acidic substance and the basic substance antacid which contains an base which is used to neutralize the effect of acid in the stomach okay and we feel relax at the time of acidity so the antacid is a basic substance because it contains a base all right children now come to the next question number 3 and the question is what happens when dilute sulfuric acid is added to zinc children once again i am going to repeat the question what happens when dilute sulfuric acid is added to zinc so the answer will be when dilute sulfuric acid is added to zinc a gas will produced and the name of the gas is hydrogen gas okay and along with this hydrogen gas zinc sulfate will form all right children as zinc is a metal and when acid reacts with metal so they form hydrogen gas so in this question you also have to write the same when dilute sulfuric acid is added to zinc hydrogen gas is produced along with zinc sulfate got it now the question number 4 and the question is how can 
कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड बी प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम एन एसिड ऑलिटिलेन हाउ वी कैन प्रिपेयर द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम एन एसिड सो वेरी सिंपल द मेथड इज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कैन बी प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम एन एसिड वेन डायल्यूट एसिड रियक्ट विथ कार्बोनेट्स ओके वेन डायल्यूट एसिड येस रियक्ट विथ कार्बोनेट्स लाइक कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट सो वॉट विल फॉर्म इट विल फॉर्म अ सॉल्ट एंड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस ओके सो वी कैन प्रिपेयर द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम एन एसिड बाई एडिंग द डायल्यूट एसिड विथ कार्बोनेट्स like calcium carbonate so we will get a salt and carbon dioxide gas okay now the question number 5 and the question is give two examples each of strong acids and weak acids all right children in this question you have to write two two names of strong acids and two name of weak acid so the strong acids are nitric acid and sulfuric acid example of strong acid nitric acid and yes sulfuric acid and the example of weak acids are yes the naturally occurring acids are weak acids so lactic acid and acetic acid you can write these are the two two examples of strong acid and weak acid okay now come to the next question number 6 and the question is why does a base applied to your skin give relief from an ant bite understood children the question when an ant bite us so generally we apply the base on the skin and while applying the base it gives relief so the reason is there when ant bite us it injects an acid inside the skin and the name of the acid is formic acid which is a formic acid and thus the skin irritates for some times okay when the formic acid injected by the ant it creates the irritation on the skin and if we want to get relief from this irritation so a base that is baking soda baking soda is a kind of base so this base is applied on the skin and while applying this base on the skin it neutralizes the effect of acid and the irritation ends with forming salt and water and provide relief get it children it's a kind of neutralization reaction takes place okay when formic acid injected so we apply the base that is baking soda and they both reacts and neutralize the effect of acid okay and we feel relief got it children so these all are the answers of short questions all right now after that i'm going to explain the answers of long questions
and the question number one is give two main uses of sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid and nitric acid understood children the question in this question you have to write two two uses of these three acids two uses of sulfuric acid two uses of hydrochloric acid and the two uses of nitric acid okay so come one by one sulfuric acid it is used to manufacture fertilizer like ammonium sulfate and superphosphate okay so this is one of the use of sulfuric acid got it children it is used to manufacture yes fertilizer like ammonium sulfate and superphosphate and the second use of this sulfuric acid is in automobile batteries sulfuric acid is used in automobile batteries get it so these are the two uses of sulfuric acid okay now the next acid is hydrochloric acid so the uses of hydrochloric acid is in oil industry to dissolve oil bearing rocks all right so this is first use of hydrochloric acid it is used in oil industry to dissolve the oil bearing rocks and the second use of hydrochloric acid is to purify salts okay or to remove the impurities from the salts so these are the two main uses of hydrochloric acid now the next acid is nitric acid and the use of nitric acid is to manufacture fertilizers such as ammonium nitrate got it children this is first use of nitric acid to make the fertilizer that is ammonium nitrate and the second use of nitric acid is to manufacture explosives such as tnt tnt is a kind of explosive and the full name of this tnt is trinitrotoluin what is the full name of this tnt children it is trinitrotoluin and it is also used to manufacture nitroglycerin so these both are explosives tnt and nitroglycerin and in the manufacture of these explosives nitric acid is used get it so these are the two two uses of sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid and nitric acid get it now come to the question number 2 and the question is what do you mean by neutralization reaction and how can a neutralization reaction be used to prepare common salt did you understood the question in this question first you have to define the neutralization reaction and after that you have to write that how common salt prepare okay by the neutralization reaction so the neutralization reaction is the reaction of an acid with a base to form a salt and water is known as neutralization reaction is it again i'm going to repeat the reaction of an acid with a base to form a salt and water is known as neutralization reaction okay and the reaction gets its name because the acid and the base cancel out each other's properties to produce a solution and the solution is neutral that is it is neither acidic nor basic all right the reaction gets its name that is neutralization reaction because yes the acid and the base cancel out each other's properties and produce a solution and this solution is neutral that is it is neither acidic nor basic and the reaction of making common salt is NaOH it is a base and the chemical name is sodium hydroxide so this is
sodium hydroxide when this base reacts with an acid that is hydrochloric acid so this base and this acid NaOH HCl it's sodium hydroxide and yes hydrochloric acid when they both react it forms a salt that is yes sodium chloride formula of sodium chloride is NaCl and along with this salt water also forms all right children so this is the chemical reaction which involves to produce salt sodium chloride okay this is common salt that we use to eat okay now come to the question number 3 and the question is some acids are dangerous others are not so explain by giving examples all right children understood the question as you know that some acids are dangerous and others acids are not dangerous so why some are dangerous and some are not dangerous explain it with example so children you know that the acids which are dangerous and others are not like concentrated mineral acids such as sulfuric acid nitric acid and hydrochloric acid they are the strong acids and they can cause serious skin burns and thus they are considered dangerous acids okay the dangerous acids are concentrated mineral acids like sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid and nitric acid as they are strong so they can cause serious burns skin burns and that is why they are considered as dangerous acids while the organic acids like citric acid lactic acid acetic acid tartaric acid and amino acids they are not dangerous okay because they are organic acids they are obtained from plant products or animal products understood so we can say that some are dangerous and some are not dangerous now question number 4 and the question is what are bases and what are their physical properties so children in this question you have to first define the term base and after that you have to write the physical properties of bases okay so the bases are hydroxides of metals are of ammonium okay what are bases they are the hydroxides of metal are of ammonium and their physical properties like the first physical property is they have a bitter taste all right bases have the bitter taste second physical property that bases can turn red litmus blue okay and the third physical property of bases are they have a soapy feel when we touch them so we feel soapy and the fourth physical property is bases reacts with acid to form salts and water get it so these are the four physical properties of bases understood children okay so i hope that you understood now come to the next question number 5 and question number 5 is give two main uses each of calcium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide get it children you have to write two two uses of 
these three bases these are the bases calcium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide all right so come to the first the uses of calcium hydroxide children the calcium hydroxide is also known as slagged lime okay and the use is it is used as a substitute for cement in low cost construction okay the areas of low cost construction this calcium hydroxide is used as a cement and the second use of calcium hydroxide is to manufacture bleaching powder all right in bleaching powder calcium hydroxide is also used so these are the uses of calcium hydroxide now second one is ammonium hydroxide so the first use of ammonium hydroxide is to manufacture fertilizers such as ammonium nitrate okay ammonium nitrate is a kind of fertilizer and this fertilizer is manufactured by ammonium hydroxide and the second use of ammonium hydroxide is to manufacture nylons plastic dyes and so on these all materials are manufactured with the help of ammonium hydroxide and you can see that ammonium hydroxide is used to manufacture these substances like nylon plastic dyes and so on get it children now the third base is sodium hydroxide and the use of sodium hydroxide is to manufacture soap this is one of the very important use of sodium hydroxide okay in the manufacturing of soap and second use is to manufacture paper rayon textiles medicines and so on okay to manufacture these all substances like paper rayon different types of textiles and the medicines sodium hydroxide is also used get it children okay now come to the next question question number 6 and the question is state two methods by which salts can be prepared and give one example of each all right children in this question you have to write two methods to prepare salt and you have to write one example for it also so come to the first the first method is to prepare salt is reaction between an acid and a base this is first method to prepare salt reaction between an acid and a base okay and the example is yes the common salt can be prepared by the reaction of sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid all right children the reaction is sodium hydroxide nuh reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms common salt that is sodium chloride and water get it children so this is the first method by which salt can be prepared this is sodium hydroxide this one is hydrochloric acid and it forms sodium chloride and water so this is one of the example of the reaction between an acid and base by which a salt 
prepared. Now the second method is the reaction between an acid and a metal. This is the second method to prepare salt, the reaction between an acid and a metal. And the example is, yes, a metal displaces the hydrogen from an acid to form a salt. Okay, and you can write it as when zinc, Zn is the symbol of zinc, when zinc metal reacts with an acid. H2SO4 sulfuric acid okay so it forms a salt zinc sulfate is a salt okay and the formula is ZnSO4 and it will produce the hydrogen gas also all right children so this is zinc metal it reacts with an acid that is sulfuric acid and forms a salt that is zinc sulfate. And hydrogen gas. Already, this one is the second method. So these are the two methods by which salt can be prepared. Okay, now seven. Okay, and the question is, what is soap, and how can you make soap in the laboratory? Get it, children? What is soap, and how you can make soap in laboratory? So, children, the soaps are actually the sodium salts of some acids. Okay, they are sodium salts of some acids and soap can be prepared in the laboratory by boiling vegetable oil or animal fat with caustic soda. Caustic soda is the common name of sodium hydroxide whose formula is NaOH. Alright, so when vegetable oil or animal fat while with caustic soda or sodium hydroxide, then soap can be prepared. Get it? And the procedure is, yes, first of all, we will take about 20 ml of castor oil in a beaker. Or we can take other oils such as coconut oil. Okay, to prepare the soap. And after that, we will add sodium hydroxide that is caustic soda understood and when they both get mixed and get boiled after heating them about 5 to 10 minutes okay so while boiling this mixture of oil and caustic soda we will stir it continuously for about 5 to 10 minutes so the reaction will take place between them and it will form soap and glycerin. Get it? So the reaction that will take place is when oil gets mixed with sodium hydroxide it forms soap and glycerin. And to separate the soap from the mixture, we will add a teaspoonful of salt to the beaker and stir. And on cooling, the solid soap separates out as a crust on the top of solution. Okay. And that solid part of that mixture is the soap. So this is the method or this is the procedure by which we can prepare soap in the laboratory.
Understood, children? Now, come to the next question number eight. Okay. And the question is, how are salts named? And give two examples. Means that how we can name the salts and you have to write the examples. Two examples also. Get it? So, the name of a salt is derived from the name of the metal contributed by the base and the radical contributed by the acid. Get it in? The way by which the salts are named is the name of metal that contributed by the base and the radical which is contributed by the acid. Then the name is derived of particular salts. And the examples, so the first example is sulfate are obtained from sulfuric acid. Okay, for example, sodium sulfate. So, sulfate salts are obtained from an acid that is sulfuric acid and that is why yes the radical of the name of this salt that is sodium sulfate comes from the sulfuric acid and the base that is sodium. Second example is carbonates. So, the carbonate salts are obtained from carbonic acid. All right children and the example of such salt is calcium carbonate. So, calcium carbonate is a kind of salt and it is obtained from carbonates. Okay. Now, the third kind of salt, chlorides and they are obtained from hydrochloric acid and the example is sodium chloride and another example or another kind of salt is acetates and they are obtained from acetic acid. And the example of this kind of salt is sodium acetate. Get it? So these are the some example of salts and their name derived from yes metal and the radical. Metal and the radical which is present in acid. So these both are used to derive the name of salts. Alright children? So, these all are the long answer questions of your book exercise. And I hope that you understood the answers of these all long questions. Thank you and have a nice day children.